How do we convince organizations to patch devices in a timely manner when they have concerns about pushing changes to live systems? So I've actually like, you know, I usually the resistance I get to the kinds of things I find and report are, this sounds expensive. Are you sure we really need to do this? Does this make us money in any way? It doesn't. Okay, are, let's just wait. Let's just wait on this. Um, so usually the the kind of concerns I get are from companies that are not technology companies. Um, they are some other company that needs to use technology, and they just do not see the point in doing this quickly. They're like, listen, listen, listen. There's some like potential risk that could happen, but it hasn't happened yet, right? No. Okay. Mm. And you're just saying it could happen. Like I could get hit by a bus tomorrow. Like you know, like. I got money I got to spend on marketing and sales, whatever else, like I'm not spending money on this. It makes me no money. It just prevents a disaster that could happen at any point anyway. Um, that's how a lot of business owners feel when you bring them a problem uh, that they need to fix. Um, yeah. You know, it's the example that springs to mind is one time I was working at a place that used radios. And for some reason, every time the police drove by, we would hear their radios, which was kind of a red flag that maybe we weren't using like the right radios. So when I was promoted to manage equipment and be able to have more control over this, I did a, a little a little bit of research and I came back and I was like, hey, um, these radios are operating on a completely illegal frequency that's been allocated to first responders. Like we would get up to a $10,000 fine per radio uh, that's operating in this frequency. So like we should probably spend about $1,000 to make sure that we have all the right equipment. Um, it's not gonna be that complicated. We just need to get a license. It's like a hundred bucks and then we're done. Like the whole, just ripping off the bandaid, we're done. Um, as far as I know, they still use the same radios today. Um, nice. And they just have to be quiet when, when uh, you know, police cars or helicopters go by. Because if they talk too much, then you know someone will probably yell at them on the frequency. That's so like, so dumb. Th this is just the way that businesses like think sometimes. They're just like, man, it's not. You know, it could be a problem. It could not be a problem. Let's just see how long it takes to until it's a problem. So I know I'm not addressing the specific, uh, you know, question about you know live changes to like a, a production system, but um, I would say it's kind of the same argument. It's just like people are risk averse because they're just like this is a potential threat you know i don't really i don't know if this is serious but really like you know it, it could happen to anyone and often it's only a matter of time if you don't take these sorts of things seriously so i often have to tell scary stories to okay. um, businesses that are really resistant to push security changes that are critical and that could actually harm them a lot more than they realize. So um, this is something that comes up a lot. Like the reasons are always different. Um, sometimes it's money, sometimes they don't wanna change something that's already working. Um, but you know, getting the point across is often a matter of telling a story about something that's happened to another business or something that actually did happen, not a potential threat, and getting them to understand that this is a this is like buying insurance. You know, like people do it because they they know something bad is going to happen eventually, and they want to make sure they're prepared for it. So this is kind of the same perspective to take. All right, that's all the time we have for today. We're going to pick a question from this session to be our lucky winner, and we will announce this on our Friday stream. And if you are the question that we select, then you will win a $100 Hack5 gift card. So uh, join us on Friday to find out who's the winner. Of course, if you are the winner and you can't make it, we will still reply to your comment and let you know that you won. But yeah, thank you to everyone who submitted a question. If your question didn't get picked this week, or if you have a new question you'd like to submit, make sure to drop them on my Twitter or on the YouTube channel, preferably the YouTube channel, so we can find it easily and we'll make sure it gets answered next week and you'll automatically be entered to win a hundred dollar hack five gift card so all right everyone we will see you later in the week thank you very much for your questions bye